Blog Talk Radio. Hello, everyone. Good morning. This is Lori Smith on Blog Talk Radio. Six o'clock here in the morning, uh, Monday, July the 11th. Glad to be here. This is one child abuse survivor to another. And we're on for 30 minutes. It's a live internet streaming radio broadcast from blogtalkradio.com. Chat room's open. I did pop the link there to what we're popping the link there to what we're talking about. Working on grief and uh, grief process and whatnot. And from Robert Bernie's web pages from Joy, Me and You. Uh, from www.joy to the number two, meu.com. And um, so yeah, I'm glad to be here. And it's uh, you know it's it's good to be back and. It's been an emotional roller coaster ride, really, for me for for a while. And um, but it's good to keep on this on this um, inner child healing, which is really what I'm doing. Um, the grief process was the next portion of Robert Bernie's web pages as far as the inner child healing went. So that's where we're just going. So so thanks everybody for being here. I appreciate it. I'm not a counselor. I'm not a therapist. I'm just a private citizen paying to do my own blog talk shows. And you have to listen at your own discretion. You know, like I'm talking about abuse and some very heavy duty topics and stuff that can really trigger survivors, you know, out there, if you're on your healing journey, you're just starting out, you might not want to listen to my stuff, right? Because it can trigger you, it can, you know, abuse topics really are very sensitive, it's sensitive material. And so you need to be sure that you're okay to listen to my stuff and that you're not going to hurt yourself or somebody else. And, um, you know, you want to be in a place where you're able to listen to this kind of stuff, right? Anything like this. And um, young people under the age of 18, I just ask that you have permission to listen to my shows. Like have an adult, somebody who cares about you, hopefully, uh, you know, listen with you, like they just, you know, one time or something, just to see if they think it's something that age appropriately that you should be listening to, right? I have no idea how young the people are who are listening to my shows. So if you're under the age of 18, just um, have permission from an adult, somebody who's a caregiver or a parent or somebody who can help you make a decision, right? So we'll get right into this topic here this morning. And um, this is uh, Grief Process Techniques. The Path to Love and Forgiveness. And this is from Robert Bernie. Robert Bernie is, uh, we've been on this for months, probably like two months, for sure two months. Um, Robert Bernie's a, he's a codependent therapist. He's a grief counselor. And he's a survivor. And he's also, um, he's a spiritual teacher. He's an author. He's written a book called Codependence, The Dance of Wounded Souls. And a lot of his excerpts from his book are here on his website, www.joytomeandyou. That's Joy, the number two, M-E-U dot com. And so he's got some great stuff here. And uh, he's talking about the grief process techniques, the path to love and forgiveness. And we were working on this on Friday, but I want to continue on here. And what he says is we are all carrying around repressed pain, terror, shame, and rage energy from our childhoods, whether it was 20 years ago or 50 years ago. And he says we have this grief energy within us, when even if we came from a relatively healthy family, because society is emotionally dishonest and dysfunctional. So he says, um, he goes on to talk about the, the grief process techniques. And he says, um, we each and every one of us has an inner channel to truth, an inner channel to the great spirit, but that inner channel is blocked up with repressed emotional energy and with twisted, distorted attitudes and false beliefs. So he says, um, we can intellectually uh, throw out false beliefs. We can intellectually remember and embrace the truth of oneness and light and love. So he's very spiritual, as you can tell. <laughs> but, you know, it's, it's good stuff. He says, but we cannot integrate spiritual truths into our day-to-day -day human existence in a way which allows us to substantially change the dysfunctional behavior patterns that we had to adopt to survive until we deal with our emotional wounds. So, I mean, the, I, I kind of agree with that. And, and the reason being is because I'm a Christian, and in my show last night was pr pretty emotional, but that's exactly how I was feeling. And, um, you know... I mean, I'm, I'm more than just a Christian. You know, I'm a, I'm, I'm re quite spiritual. I'm not religious at all. And, um, you know, I can say, okay, my God can heal me. You know, but if I'm not willing to do the to do the work, you know, then then where does this stuff go? You know what I mean? Too too many people are, you know, believe right and will believe. Okay, I, I believe that I'm healed, and yet still having so many problems, so many emotional difficulties. And I think it's just because we can't deny what the truth of what's going on inside of us. We can try to pretend, we can skirt around it. I, I did that for years, obviously. Um, you know, just trying to, to survive. But until we're willing to take a look at what happened to us and what caused us to feel the way we're feeling, what caused us to actually behave the way we're behaving or whatever the issue is, you know, and actually get to the root of it, and then grieve it, and you know, ex you know, t do do the process, the steps, right? 
whatever works for you. I mean, there's always there's all all you know lots and lots of good stuff out there. But this is, you know, I mean, I'm not a counselor or therapist. I'm just going by what what I'm learning out here. You know what I mean? These certain steps we can follow, and allow ourselves to to work through this stuff. And that's exactly what I'm doing. And so he says, until we, you know, we can't really tune into or or integrate the spiritual truths or or tune into that oneness, right? With, unless we deal with our emotional wounds. He says, until we deal with the subconscious emotional programming from our childhood. So he says, we cannot learn to love without honoring our rage. We cannot allow ourselves to be truly intimate with ourselves or anyone else without owning our grief. Um, he says, we cannot clearly reconnect with the light unless we are willing to own and honor our experience of the darkness. So, and, you know, so many of us have been in that darkness, you know, for a long time. <clears throat> and it's it's a bad place to be, you know. And I and, and and I know four years ago, like when I started my healing journey, like that's exactly what happened to me was I could I started to feel a connection to the light because I was in such a dark dark place, you know. And so when I started to when I actually gave myself permission to heal, I said, okay, I'm going to do this. I'm going to do this. It opened up the door, you know, to channel, I guess, you know, or just to be able to feel like, okay, I, I can see that light, you know. I can see it, you know, and that's that was very hopeful because, you know, for so long I couldn't see it. And so I think that's for a lot of us, you know, who have been so wounded and so hurt, you know, and just sitting in this dark place all the time, you know, it's almost like you think, does that light ex actually exist? Is it there? I don't see it, you know, for so many people. And I know there's people going through this all the time, right? It's absolutely horrible, horrible place to be. But I guess unless we honor our experience, of that darkness, right? Of having to to do whatever we had to do to survive within that darkness, unless we honor that, I guess, and give it a place and 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 look at it, um, then you know we then then we can't. He says we we really can't reconnect with the light, which is interesting. But I know like yeah, it does make sense to me on a certain level. I, I'm a Christian, so there you go. But I still you know see what he's saying. He says we cannot fully feel the joy unless we are willing to feel the sadness. So we need to do our emotional healing to heal our wounded souls in order to reconnect with with our souls on the highest vibrational levels. So he says, in order to reconnect with the God force that is love, light, joy, and truth. So I just find it interesting what he talks about. You know, um, it is quite interesting. He says, um, the way to stop reacting out of our inner children is to release the stored emotional energy from our childhood by doing the grief work that, that will heal our wounds. So the only effective long-term way to clear our emotional process, um, to clear the inner channel to truth which exists in all of us, is to grieve the wounds which we suffered as children. The most important single tool, the tool which is vital to changing behavior patterns and attitudes in this healing transformation, is the grief process, uh, the process of grieving. So this is what Robert Bernie says. It's great. It's quite interesting. I was looking at a long, you know, obviously a long time ago <clears throat> on my shows. I don't know, a year ago maybe looking at the Survivor to Thriver workbook and going through it. And I spent months on it, uh, um, just going through that Survivor to Thriver workbook from the ASCA, the Adult Survivors of, of Child Abuse, um, the ASCA.org. Um, uh, and the actual website is www.ascasupport, S-U-P-P-O-R-T, ASCASupport.org. That's um, a website that has a uh, the Survivor to Thriver manual on it. And it's free. It's a free download, or you can read it right from the site. But um, that that's a great workbook. It's a great handbook, and I did go through some of it. I, I didn't do all of it. I did I did look at all of it on on the the show here, just going through it and stuff. But I didn't go back and redo the work with it because I got busy. I got extremely busy, and I actually um, didn't take the time to do that. So I think I need to because that workbook makes sense to me. It totally makes sense to me might not make sense to somebody else, that's for sure. We're all different and we all need different things. But that workbook was seemed like something I could do, you know, when I was working through it. So I might I'm probably will end up going back and, and look, taking another look, run through that book. Um uh, but there's all kinds of great, you know, workbooks out there for people who, you know, I guess there's courage to heal or whatever. There's all kinds. You know, there's so many that I haven't even seen, I'm sure, that are really awesome to help people um, to work through these processes, like the grieving, the mourning, the, you know, the acceptance, the, you know, the anger and the, all the stuff that we need to work through, you know. So, it is, uh, you know, I do, I still have work to do, that's for sure. And especially now because I just got in touch with these feelings that I had pushed down so far, 
uh, from uh, childhood sexual abuse, and it just, you know, it's just, it's okay. I'm managing, right? But the issue is, is, is it's incredibly hard. You know what I mean? Like, um, but I think I'm doing really well because I'm, I'm maintaining, and you know, I'm not, I'm not, um, I, I don't know. I guess I'm not floundering. I'm, I'm not um, suffering too, too much. I'm okay. But it has been, you know, um, a painful experience for sure. But I needed to do it, you know, for as long as I was going to let those memories, or those the, the feelings of what happened to me as a child, as far as child sexual abuse goes, as long as I was going to let that stay down in the dark, you know, way down inside, I was never going to be able to deal with it. You know, I was just always going to be there, just on a level where it was manageable for me. And that's how I learned how to cope as a child, obviously, right? So that's what I was talking about last night and, and, uh, and Friday, really. So, you know, if we don't deal with this stuff, it's just going to sit there and sit there and sit there. So my main goal, you know, when I started my healing journey, and especially when I started reading into it and finding out, whoa, I've got to get in touch with all this stuff and all these different points of my life where I was damaged and really wounded, and you know, in order to actually heal from it. You know, and I thought, okay, where do I start? You know, and I, I guess I just started where it just made sense for me to start, which was the biggest portion of, of my abuse, which was... Um, the, the stuff that hurt me that was from my parents, from my mother, you know, and which would have been the child, the, the physical abuse, the verbal, emotional, psychological abuse. But eventually, you know, I knew I was going to have to deal with this child sexual abuse from my brother. So I, I but I was just, you know, it was I was just waiting because I was like, when when the time comes, I'll have to deal with it. But the time came, and so now I'm dealing with it, right? <laughs> but you know, it's hard, and some people can't do it self help. You know, some people just need a therapist, or they need a counselor, they need somebody to help them with the, whatever it is, you know, a group support or online group support or whatever it is. You know, I was I was in um, an online group support for a while, and it was very helpful because I was on that site. This was, I don't know, I'd say two years ago. Um, I was actually able to, I did talk to some of the people on there about the, the child sexual abuse. The But the thing is, is I hadn't gotten hold of a lot of the memories, and I was talking to them about what how what they did and what worked for them as far as trying to, to you know, allow those memories to come to the surface because I really needed to see this stuff so I could move past it because it was just killing me, you know, and I did for until I started my healing journey, until the age of 41, right? So, I mean, those last four years I've been really working on trying to get in touch with all the parts of myself, you know what I mean? And so that, this is kind of what, what Robert Bernie's talking about. You know, we have to... We have to find all that stuff and it, it may not even be abuse that this grief energy could be something just that caused you know a death in the family something that really hurt us you know um you know grieving uh, any kind of emotional wounds you know something that happened at school something that happened between friends something that happens in between in a marriage you know this grief energy and unless we're willing to get it out and and look at it and grieve it and properly mourn it and go through the process and we're, but if we stuff it that's where the problem that's where the problem is if we stuff this stuff just so we can get through the day, because we do have to do that. I mean, obviously, people have to work. People are busy. People have families. People have things that have to get done, you know, especially if they have children. It's really hard to do work on, to work on yourself if you have children, because I can't imagine if I had a child here with me right now, me trying to deal with what I'm dealing with with a small child. I, I would have to, all my focus would have to be on my child. You know, because I mean, I could still focus a little bit on myself, but I would never be able to allow myself to feel what I needed to feel. I guess unless it was in the middle of the night, then when are you going to sleep? Incredibly hard, you know. And I, I think it could be done. You can work it out in a schedule type thing. But I, I you know, I don't know. I, I think that would be so incredibly hard. But there's people out here, you know, who have had, had to deal with this stuff with with so much going on in their lives, with no time to really work on themselves, you know. And then some people like me put it off because we don't want to deal with it. Thinking, oh no, I'm okay, I'm fine, I'm fine, you know, I'm rolling with the punches. Oh, I'm okay, right? I'm suicidal, but I'm okay. <laughs> you know, that's ridiculous. So, unless we're willing to look at it, it's not going to go anywhere. So that's why I'm really determined to get in, in touch with all the parts of, all the wounded parts of myself. And so I, I do completely agree with that as far as what he's saying, Robert Bernie's saying. And so. The process of grieving. So that's what I'm. I'm I guess I'm, I'm still working on some of that, you know. And so he says, in order to do the inner child work, we need to be willing to do the grief work. And emotions are energy, and that energy needs to be released through crying and raging. So we need to own our feelings about what happened to us. I mean, I, 
I didn't rage, you know, and I don't rage because raging, like I, I used to rage when when I was younger. But you know, I, I can't get that over emotional where I'm just raging anymore. I can't do it because I just my physical health will not allow me to do that. You know what I mean? Like I can't. I don't think I can do that anymore. I can't bring myself back from that. You know what I mean? Like I decided to do it in a much more subtle way. You know, and that's to allow little bits of of, of this stuff that needs to come out in very small pieces. Instead of just letting it all out at once, because I just can't, can't do that. I just can't do it. I've been, you know, um, working with this, you know, for dealing with this for so long. And, and I thought, no, if I let myself just rage, you know, you know, it's 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 not going to be healthy. I'll just wear myself out, and and I just I'll probably hurt myself. I just can't deal with it. So I'm just doing this in my own way, which is small manageable pieces. You know what I mean? Small manageable chunks. Crying when I need to, you know, and allowing myself to feel this stuff. I was talking to my good friend Chipsy Witch the other day, and actually yesterday, and she said, I told her, so I was kind of ready, getting ready to move on through this process of healing and wounding my inner child, my eight-year-old who was raped and sodomized by my brother, and which is what I'm dealing with right now. And um, she's, I was just telling her that I was kind of going to get ready to work through the process, and she's, she knows, and, and she's like, well, you're going to have to you just give it time. Allow yourself to feel what you need to feel, right? Because I'm ready to rush through this, see? Like, for me, it's it's such an uncomfortable issue, you know, that I just want to rush through it, right? Because I'm like, okay, well, I want to hurry up and feel better. You know what I mean? Like, <laughs> I'm like so anxious, like, to get through it because I want to feel better. You know what I mean? But if I don't deal with what I need to feel about this this issue of my inner child, my, my eight-year-old, myself at eight years old, uh, having to go through the horror of, of this sexual assault, you know, if I don't allow myself to feel everything I need to feel from that, then all I'm doing is the same thing I was doing before, just not not just not just dealing with it and pushing it off somewhere else so I can get past it, right? So so I am going to just take it easy, take it sort of one step at a time and take it slow and allow myself to feel what I need to feel and cry when I need to cry and get mad and angry when I need to get mad, right? Um, you know, and get sad when I need to get sad and just allow myself to feel these things, right? In manageable pieces and chunks, right? And so... You know, it's it's good. I, I I'm I'm kind of happy that uh, you know this is actually. People say, how could you be happy this is happening? The issue is, is I want to be able to move past it. You know, I want to be able to heal. And how how can I heal from something that I won't even allow myself to look at? How can I heal without really actually even knowing what I'm trying to heal from? Which I know what I'm trying to heal from, but I'm just saying. Yeah, I think that's why we have to we have to get the stuff out and look at it and deal with it because it it's, it happened. It ha- you know it's our experience, right? So it's like. If we don't allow ourselves to feel what we need to feel from that, we're just repressing it. So I think that's quite interesting. I don't really know how it all works. I'm just not a psychotherapist or anything like that. But it it is interesting, for sure. So he says, we need to own our feelings about what happened to us. This whole ownership thing, I just don't quite, you know, get. Um, I might have to have somebody explain it to me. (laughs) Because I don't want to own, you know, the pain, right? I don't want to own that. I, I actually throw it away every time I think about it. Um... You know, I, I I don't know. Well, I don't. To me, I don't know what I don't know what that is. You know what I mean? And maybe what that is, I don't. I'm not sure, but I think what it is is I don't want to own it because then I would have to say uh, maybe that I did it to myself or something. You know what I mean? Like, see, I don't. That's why I don't quite get that whole ownership thing because I don't want to own something that somebody else did to me that was not my fault. You know. So I don't see I don't that's why I, this doesn't make sense to me this whole owner ownership of of um you know this this stuff this pain and stuff like that I don't know why I have to own this pain I didn't do this to myself I did not rape myself sodomize myself when I was 8 years old you know what I mean I did not like beat the shit out of myself for almost like 17 years right <laughs> it's like you know no I didn't do that to myself so I don't know why I should have to take ownership. Um, I, so that's why I'm kind of like, okay, I'm still not quite sure about that whole ownership stuff. But if, uh, hopefully somebody will explain it to me. Um, but he says, grief is energy that needs to be released. We need to give ourselves permission to feel our pain, sadness, and rage. Now this I understand, giving ourselves permission um, to, to feel our pain, sadness, and rage. And that's basically what I did four years ago. Because I was like, I just, I'm going to give myself, I'm going to allow myself to heal. I'm going to allow myself to love myself, which was a big issue. You know, because I would tell people, oh, well, you sure, I'm okay with myself, I love myself. I would never tell somebody I hate myself inside, internally. 
I'd get home from work at the end of the day and sit on the couch and say, I hate myself. You know what I mean? So on the outside, I was looking pretty good, right? Like most people wouldn't have realized that I absolutely loathed myself. And I was having a lot of issues. But um, especially when I was a young teenager, I hated my body. I hated my sexuality. You know, I hated my breasts, right? I was like, I was like why am I stuck with this sexuality? Why, why am I a woman? See, that's from being raped. That's from being sodomized. That's from watching my dad rape my mother. You know, and that's from just this whole sexual stuff. You know, that's from watching my dad sexually abuse my brothers. You know what I mean? Like, and and some me, right? Like, you know, I hated my body. I just hated it. I thought it was just so disgusting and dirty and just gross to me because of what happened to me. Because I was defiled. I was just, you know, I was just damaged. So, to me, I just. I, I didn't I, I didn't love myself, who I was inside either, right? This person inside the shell, right? And so, you know, I was good on the outside, looked pretty good to most people. Like, I wouldn't walk around saying, I hate myself, right? I was always really the life of the party. The issue is, is I come home at night and want to kill myself. And I was seriously planning my suicides for many, many years and, and, and was wanting to carry them out, you know? And the issue is, is like, it's something always stopped me, you know, something always stopped me, you know, and, and, you know, said, no, you know, no, no, another day, another day. Because I would sit there at the end of the night, you know, be 26 years old, you know, working in the Grand Canyon, thinking I could go over the cliff, I could just drive over the cliff, man, and this would be all over, right? Because I was, I was on my own, I was by myself, and, and working in the Grand Canyon, and I didn't have to worry about anybody bothering me or around me that needed to know what I was thinking or doing. And I was like, I could end this pain, I could end this pain. I mean, that's like 26 like uh, to 41, you know. That's like 15 years more of hell at the age of 41. I was still thinking about killing myself. And, and I moved to Canada on purpose so that I could get away with it. So it was a cry for help, but I wasn't crying out for help. That's the issue. <laughs> I was fine. Everything's fine. Great. Sure. And at the end of the day, I'm like, I could, I could end this pain. I could, I could end it. I could get out of it. You know, because I would question. I'd be like, "How can I get out of this pain without killing myself?" That was my question. And so, four four years ago, when I decided, you know, enough is enough, man. You know, like, when am I going to straighten up and allow myself to heal? Like, this is ridiculous to carry on this garbage that was put on me. You know what I mean? Like, why can I not just be like other people and heal? You know, I started to really kind of come down on myself and um, make some better decisions for myself. And so, you know, it's uh, thankfully, you know, really thankfully, because I know I want to, now I'm like, I'll live. I won't, I will, I will live my days. I will not die, you know. And it's just this, this, this fighter spirit just kind of came back inside me and, and said, no, we're, we're doing this. You know, we're going to learn to love ourselves. We are really, truly going to love ourselves and honor all of those parts of ourselves that were so wounded and so damaged and so screwed right up. You know, and none of it was my fault except for the self abuse. But part of that wasn't even my fault because it was what I was shown how to do, right? So, you know, it's it's harsh reality for so many of us. You know, for almost all of us on the planet, really. Um, but especially for people who have been through the most horrific stuff as a child and have to try to come to terms with it later, you know. It's it's incredibly hard, but it can be done. I have too many people in front of me saying, you know what, you can do this, you can do this, you know. And to me, that's such an awesome thing. To me, it's just like such a slap in the face to say to somebody, oh, you must be doing so well. Look at you. Look how you've handled your healing journey. Look at aren't aren't you just so so, so great, you know? Uh, it, it's it's kind of like no, those people suffered, man. Those people suffered. When you read people's stories, like Lindsay Tolson. Um, you know, Elizabeth Brawley, like, you, you start reading some of these, Carol D. Levine, you know, you start reading some of these people's stories, and, and they suffered, man. You know? I know so many survivors, and I've been privileged enough to talk to people that have, you know, been through some of the most horrific stuff. And there they are, sitting in front of me, like these shining beacons of light, you know, saying, you can do this, you know? So I'm not going to insult them with some sort of a bad attitude. Oh, look at you. You just must be doing so great, you know. It's like, come on, these people have been in hell and come, you know, and back and probably many times. <laughs> so, you know, I give them a lot of credit and I honor them 
um, for for doing what they've done and and for trying to help so many people. You know what I mean? Which is what they're trying to do. But there's so many of us, you know, that there's so many of us that are on that are having to deal with this stuff. 39 million survivors in the United States alone of child sexual abuse. So you want to talk about some serious problems. And so we're not alone in this, which is really pathetic and sad. It would be great if there was ever only one person that was ever sexually abused in their lifetime, wouldn't it? That person might feel lonely, but at least they would know that nobody else had to ever, ever go through that, ever. You know? And it'd be great if it was only like one of us that was ever physically, verbally, emotionally, psychologically abused. Because then you could sit back and say, well, that really sucked really bad. But at least there's nobody else having to deal with this shit and this garbage and this pain, this incredible pain. You know, it's really sad that there's so many of us. And, and that sadly enough, you're not alone. And all of us have been to hell and back. Right? So we need to realize that, that we need to allow ourselves to heal. And these people, these beacons of light in front of us, with their hands out, you know, you make sure you reach out. Because they're reaching back to you, right? It's so important because that's that's their that's what that's that's their that's what they're doing. That's that's their that's their love and and that truth and that light coming back to say, you know what, you can do it. You know, so I honor them and I give them a lot of credit for for doing what they do and and I just try to, you know, really just try to mimic their behaviors <laughs> because I'm like, okay, you people made it, so I know I can I can do this, you know. Like, look at what they've been through. They they made it. I can do this. You know, it gives me a little bit of confidence and um, and encouragement, you know what I mean, to, to keep going and keep working through and, and keep going, you know. And Gypsy, which, you know, which just helps me out in every way. So, so part of grief work is simply owning the sadness and the anger. We need to own the grief about what happened to us as children. And then we also need to own the grief over what effect it has had on us as an adult. So... And so we were kind of reading through here, um, and I just basically repeated this morning's show, but we'll get right into this tomorrow, and, uh, because I sort of looked at this on Friday, right? So we're kind of just going over this again, but I really wanted to talk a little bit more about the grief, you know, what, what, I, what, what I'm going to have to deal with with this grief process, you know what I mean? Because this is, this, this is my healing journey, right? This is what I'm doing. So, like, I'm going to have to, you know, really start working on it. And I'm, and I'm going to go back to the ASCA, um, the Survivor to Survivor Workbook is what I'm going to do because I printed it off. It's like a 115 pages long. But the first 35 pages on that workbook are are safety first because you have to ask yourself all these questions. Am I, safe enough to, am I safe enough to do this workbook? 35 pages devoted to safety first. <laughs> so that tells you how serious this is. You know, it tells you how serious this really is. Like, and we know ourselves. If we don't know ourselves, we're in trouble. We better know ourselves. We better know. We better know if we can trust ourselves or not to do something like that on our own. You know, like I know myself that I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna self injure, and I'm not gonna hurt myself. I'm not gonna hurt anybody else by working through this stuff. But some people can't. They and they have to have somebody helping them, right? So and then there's not. There's no. There's no shame in that. You know, this shit doesn't belong to us, right? I hope everybody knows this. People, it's such a stigma, I think. To not, it's such a, and it's also such a, what do you want to call that? Like when it's cliche, you know, the shame doesn't belong to us. But you know what? It doesn't really. I mean, my God, we're going to allow the fact that that we were wounded and, and damaged <clears throat> to keep us from healing because of the shame. Screw that crap. You know, the, I get that's what makes me mad is those buggers did this to us, and what we're supposed to sit back and take it and be okay. You know, with the no. You know, that's why I said no, no, no more, no more. You know, like if I need to get whatever help I need to get, man, I'm going to get it because this, this stuff was not my fault, man. And why should I continue to suffer because, you know, because they put this on me, right? Just because of the shame of it, dealing with the stigma of it. Screw that. You know what I mean? That's why I'm going, that's why I'm out here talking about this stuff because I want to break down those barriers, you know? So, you know, you make sure you get some help wherever you can get it. You reach out. If you are having a hard time and you just can't find anybody to talk to, then you call a crisis line. Phone somebody, you know. But you definitely don't give up. Not ever. I had uh, some good advice from Sandra Potter here this this weekend. And she told me, she said, never, ever, ever, ever give up. Not ever. We cannot give up. You know. So, and Kate, Kate Mitchell, you know, and Gypsy Witch, and, and just telling me, never, ever give up. You know. So, it's not an option. We... We can do this, right? 
So take good care of yourselves, everybody. Have a great day. I'll be back on tonight. I'll be on uh, tomorrow night. I have a show with uh, Carol D. Levine, author of Panic Child. We'll be on for 90 minutes. I hope you can tune in. That's going to be 7 p.m. Uh, Mountain Standard Time. And then um, you can check my show page with all the other show page, shows that are coming up there. But have a great day, everybody. Take good care of yourselves, you know, and uh, make sure that you, you know that you do stick around here and you do get some help because you certainly deserved so much better. But it won't happen if we don't do it. It won't happen unless I do this, right? So, so make sure you make the right choice for yourself and you get yourself some help if you really are having a hard time, right? Take good care. Bye-bye.